Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Betwixt and Between. You have finally found a way into that world between worlds and you're going to have to find your own path through that. You do that by playing the game and here's how it goes. You are going to play three rounds and then the game is over. You count up all your points, whoever has the most is the winner. You get points for your tokens on this card, points for spells you have, and points for gemstones you still have left unused at the end of the game. But again, you play for three rounds and then the game ends. Then you count up your points. If you have the most, you are the winner. You get 10 points for each of your tokens on this card. You can put them there at the end of each round. Every spell card you have with you will have the points written on them. They're in the corner here. Every card will tell you how many points it's worth. And you get one point for each unused gemstone you have with you at the end of the game. Next, what is a round? Each round is three steps. Step one. Every player gets five of these cards to draft. And as a group, you make this full moon on the table. Step two. You all keep taking turns until no one has any of these cards left. Step 3. You deal with this full moon to get points. And you prepare everything for the next round. Let me go through that again in detail. Step 1. Every player gets 5 of these cards. Unless you're with 2 players, then you deal out 6 cards. You choose one card to keep and pass the others to the player to your left. This is called drafting. You keep doing this until you all have chosen four cards to keep. That means every player has one card left they didn't choose. Starting with the first player, you place that card on the table. When you're done, You'll have made this square of four cards, and the middle looks like a full moon with four icons in it. That means that at the end of the round, you need to pay four gemstones in these colors, and then you get to place your token on this card, which will be ten points for you at the end of the game. So again, every player gets five cards, you keep one and pass the others around, at some point you have four cards to use and the one that you didn't choose goes on the table as a part of this full moon. Step 2. Every player gets turns. You start with the first player and then keep going clockwise around the table. As soon as everyone has used these four cards that they have in their hand, this part of the round is over. Every time it's your turn, you must put one of your cards on the board. So that means you will get four turns in total. Alright, what do you do then? What do you do when it's your turn? When it's your turn, you have these action tokens in your color to spend. Three of these tokens are optional and one action token you must use. That's this one, the action that says you have to put a card on the board. This is the only action you must do and the other three are optional. But, as always, it's best to get as much out of your turn as possible. So, when it's your turn, you can do up to four actions. Every time you do an action, you flip over the token to indicate you've used it. I'll explain in a moment what each action is. It's also possible that you have some spells you can use, or one or more of these cards. You can use those during your turn too. You don't need any action token for that. 
If you've got spells or other cards, just use them when it's your turn. But as soon as you've done all your action, your turn isn't over yet. It's possible that during your actions you have picked up some of these gems. At the end of your turn you can place these gems on your own player mat. It's up to you where you place them. You're even allowed to move the gems that were already there. You will never lose these gems and they will never be stuck on one space. And you do this to make a certain pattern. If you have made the pattern that it shows on a spell card, then you can place it open in front of you on the right side of your player board. You can even turn the card if that helps you make the pattern. And all those empty spaces in between don't actually have to be empty on your own player mat. All you have to look at is which colors you need to be where. Any spell that is open on the right side of your player board is a spell that you can use when you're taking your actions. As soon as you've used a spell, you move it to the left side of your player board to indicate you've used it. Do keep in mind that when you remove a pattern from your player board, you have to discard that spell. Then you lose it and also the points that are written on it. So, that's what you do when it's your turn. First, use your action tokens to do actions. If you have any spells or any of these cards, you can use those as well. And you end your turn by placing your gemstones on your mat to make patterns, and those will create spells. The rulebook says that while you're doing your spell stuff, the next player can already start their turn. There's no need to wait for the next player to wait until you're fully done. And don't forget to flip over your used action tokens back up so you can use them when it's your turn again. The rulebook also has a page that explains what each spell will do for you. Moving on, what are all the actions you can do when it's your turn? As I've said, you have these action tokens to do them. This one with the card is mandatory. The other three are optional. And of this one, you even have two. This token with the arrow means move. When you spend this action, you can move your own player figure one space on the game board. You can move up or down, left or right. If your player figure lands on a card and there's no other player there, then you get whatever bonus that card provides you. The rulebook and your own information card will tell you what each icon means. And you have two move tokens, so during your turn it's possible to move two spaces. If you start your turn on a card, you don't get the bonus, only if you move onto a card. Next, this token with the hand on it. This is another optional one, but it's a good one. When you spend this token, you can take one gemstone that is right next to you on a card on an adjacent space. So you can't take a gem from a card where you are standing on, only from a card on a space next to you. And it has to be the gem that is right close to you. You can't take a gem that's all the way on the other side of the card. Only the side that you're standing next to. But that's it. That's what this token does. Take the gem next to you. Just put it in front of you and later you can put it on your own player mat to make one or more spells. That's also what these other cards are for, the ones that show the same hand. When it's your turn you can always play these cards as a free action to take one or more gems from cards next to you. Just look at whatever the card says, it speaks for itself. So the token or the cards with the hand mean grab those gems. The last action token is the one you always must play, the explore action. When you do this action, you can choose one card from your hand. 
you immediately get the bonus that it shows in the top right corner of the card, here. Sometimes it's a gemstone, but it can also be one of these cards with the hand, or a spell card. In that case you can take a card from the spell deck, or choose one from the open cards on display. Make sure to fill the empty space so there are four cards on display again. After you have taken your bonus, you have to place this card somewhere on an empty space of the game board. You can turn the card any way you like. End this action by placing gems on the spaces on the sides, so that you or the other players can take them later. And those are the three actions you can do when it's your turn. Move one space, grab one gem, or place one of the cards from your hand on the board. That leaves us with the last step of each round. When every player has no more cards in their hand, you get to step three of each round. Deal with the full moon and prepare everything for the next round. So, at the start of the round you all together made this full moon by putting four cards together. There are four icons inside the full moon. If you spend four gemstones that have the colors that it shows on this card, then you can place one of your tokens on this card. The moon shows these icons, so I put these gemstones back into the supply, and now I can place my own purple token on this card. At the end of the game I get 10 points for each of my tokens here. You are allowed to do this more than once per round, if you have enough gems to spend. When every player has done this, you can remove the full moon. Just put those cards on the discard pile. Every spell that you have used this round can go back to the right side of your player mat. Any spell that can be used more than once per game is now available again for the next round. The spell cards that are on display also go on the discard pile and put out four new open spell cards. If any of the cards on the game board have any tokens on them, they also get removed. And you end each round by each removing one card from the game board. Every player chooses one card and just removes it from the board. If there are any gems on that card, they also go back into the supply. For this round I was the starting player, so now the person to my left is the new first player. And you go back to step one. Give everyone five cards, draft them until you have four, and the one card you don't use is put on the table as a part of the new full moon for the next round. Three rounds in total, and then the game is over. I have no details to explain. Anything you might run into will happen automatically, and the rulebook will help you with that. It's quite short and clear. I hope you feel like you understand how to play Betwixt and Between, and that it'll bring you some magical happiness when you play it. Thank you for watching, feel free to leave a comment, and see you for the next one.